was younger. My, my oldest brother introduced me to gaming. He was just playing a game and I wanted to play the game, but it was his game, so he wouldn't allow me to play. So I always wanted to play the game. So let me let's change it up. What um why do you game? Why do you love gaming? Uh, it's therapeutic to me. To be honest, it helped me keep me keep me sane. Help me keep me sane in society and help me go get through the day. So it's, it's almost like a release. It's a release, yeah. It's an unwind release in some way. It kept me, kept me away from all the neg negativity. Um, what do you enjoy most playing right now? Warzone. Well, I can say, yeah, mainly Warzone, yeah. Why Warzone? It's more realistic. It's the most realistic shooting game I ever came across to me, my, in my opinion. But um, and it's free. The game is free itself. So, do you ever feel embarrassed by being a gamer? At the beginning, I did. I mean, it all depends who you with or who you are around. Your circle is mainly important because I mean, if you're around somebody that doesn't really like video games like that and stuff like that. Then most likely you're gonna get backlash behind you. They're gonna consider you less than or a child or like immature or stuff like that. You know, but it all depends on the type of circle that you involve yourself in. That, that's what matters most. You good? You gotta think. Most women, single parent uh, moms, they see their kids playing the, the, those type of things. So they don't expect for a grown man to be into stuff like that. They, they expect for more, more grown men to be more into handling business, taking care of home, um, just working and just be supportive and be a provider for the family. Has that has that been a problem in previous relationships? Oh, heck yeah, heck yeah, heck yeah, heck yeah. And I was trying to play that role, but it wasn't for me because I wasn't happy. You know, I wasn't Ooh. happy with myself. You know, so that's why, like, me and that individual, we are no longer together now because of that. So sometimes you just got to understand, realize who you are, and just embrace yourself for who you are. Because, I mean, a lot of people ain't going to embrace it for you. You got to do it yourself. True. What anime are you currently watching? The uh, Misfits of Demon King. Was it Demon King? The Misfits. The Misfit of Demon Academy. Demon, Demon, Demon Academy. Um, Red Girlfriend. Um, My Hero Academia. The Seven Deadly Sins. Uh, what else? Um, was it Bunker? No, no, no. Um, man, it was on the next place. Man. Baki? Baki. Baki. Um, Cause. Classic Dragon Ball, Bleach, Naruto. Um, speaking of Naruto, I gotta catch up. Naruto is so long, man. But I, I I I like Bleach more than Naruto, to be honest. How okay. come? I don't know. It just like to me, like the storyline to me is like much way straight to the point more to me than Naruto. You know, um, and I like um, the I like Ichigo, and I like um, Rukia's brother. How his name is? God damn. Uh, Bakugan. Bakugo. Yeah, you say you know Bakugan? I think so. No, I think that's ah. That's it. But I just like the whole storyline. To be honest, it's actually terrific and stuff. So. So Ryan, let, let me ask you. Um, as somebody that's like newly into anime and stuff, um, you got to see it like a a different, a lots of different genre. types of genre. Genre. Um, anime. what what's have been some of your favorite genres and like also how did you get into anime? I, well, actually, one of my good friends back home from Baltimore introduced me to anime. Um. 
I was the regular kid in the hood, out in the streets, doing, trying to do shit to fit in, which is really bad. Which was really bad and stuff like that. And then um, one day I was in school and I went at my homie's house. He was like, hey. Well, actually, no, I'm going to go back further than that. My brother was watching The Fist of the North Star. That's how I really got into anime. Fist of the North Star was my original anime. When I saw people knocking teeth out, blood, all. Man, I was like, ah, I, I like this show. So it really drew my attention because I ain't never see a, no cartoon that had blood and, and gore and all that crap. So that's what really drew me into anime, to be honest. And I still like that show to this day. It's, a, it's definitely a classic though, but yeah, that's what got me into anime, my brother did. So what some of the other genres of anime you have, like, other than, like, action? Because I think a lot of people don't know that um, exactly all the different genres of anime can take. Yeah, well, Riddle Girlfriend. So Riddle Girlfriend was more a shock to me because all the anime I knew about was action. But I didn't know it was more of more to that than just action. So Riddle Girlfriend it was introduced by Desmo Primo. You guys, y'all gotta check them out anyway. Links up in the bottom. Links up, links up in the bottom. Desmo Primo actually getting to um, Rental Girlfriend. Um, he introduced him to Rental Girlfriend, and like, man, I've been hooked on that shit ever since. <laughs> actually, as a matter of fact, if you wanna watch the new episode today, it's, it's being released today, so I recommend all y'all to get Crunchyroll and check that joint out. But Rental Girlfriend is basically about. This guy got dumped by his main girlfriend, and he was very heartbroken. And by him being heartbroken, he was like, you know what? I ain't going to be like this no more. I'm going to go ahead and decide to see what, what they had to offer of him. So he came up to, um, I think, a website. Or he, was, he came up to a website or a regular magazine or something like that where he saw the rental girlfriend, where you could rent a girlfriend for a day. And she could be your girlfriend for a day. Um, and that part was very unique because I did not know they really had stuff like that over over cross seas. Like, I didn't know that. So it, it kind of basically, basically helps you get through breakups. And if you got special events and stuff, you can rent a girlfriend to really, like, put a perception out to others and make it, make it seem like you... Uh, straight more I mean not straight but you more um like you more grounded as a man you get what I'm saying but yeah so he looked up on um rental girlfriend met this um girl and gave her a good grade but then he found out that the rental girlfriend and him goes to the same college is it college? Uh yes yeah yeah, yeah something like that he went to the same college and he recognized her but she, I think she didn't know that he went there also. So he was just, she was just there, and then they was talking and stuff. And long story short, now it's to the point now is it's this 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 situation they got going on as far as like like their grandmothers know each other. That's what happened. So their grandmothers know each other, and her grandmother don't know that she's a rental girlfriend. So she wasn't, she's not trying to let her grandmother know. So what, what they did was, is pretending to be girlfriend and boyfriend throughout the whole series. And then there's another real, I, I can't get into it, but y'all got to just check it out. Check it out. <laughs> Mainly, to be honest, what, where you say, where do I like the game at the most? Um, I definitely, I'm not going to lie. I, I like gaming at home. Um, to be practically honest, I really do because it's only me. I'm in the house and stuff. And like at the same time, when I game, I also think about a whole lot of other shit, a whole lot of other things that, that could be done. But, um, if I do game with a group, I would like to game... I would like to go to somewhere where I can have a drink and game and stuff like that. So, 
Which is, I guess is the motivation for. But it's the motivation for Game of Ball. So, um, I would that, that the reason why I think Game of Ball is a good idea, a great idea, is a location. It's a video game bar, anime bar, where people could be gaming and also experiencing the anime culture and stuff. And like, and it's nothing like that here. It's nothing like that. That I know is here in, um, in Houston, Texas. So the reason why I, I like the like I would like to game at Game of Bar is for those reasons to be around people with the same interests as me, the same um, mindset, basically. You know, because I'm a gamer at the, at the end of the day. Well, not only that, I think you're combining the two. The two you just got together. Yeah. The two things that kind of like you like to do when you want to relax, like what you do with your homies, you, you, you know, take you might play some games with your homies and you know take a drink, you know, and I think that's a brilliant thing to capture at Game of Life. Um, now let's get into what do you game on? Are you a PC <laughs> player? Are you a uh, PlayStation player? Switch man. player? Um, Xbox? What What does Six game on? Well, I game on Xbox, Team Xbox, Team Xbox. You know, but um, I got respect for PlayStation lovers. I re I respect for y'all, but y'all is a lot of shit y'all need to get fixed. But I'm not even gonna lie. But we, we, that's a whole nother... I ain't okay, but uh, we, we, anybody can say Xbox, <laughs> but why Xbox? Like I like Xbox because it's more organized. It's straight to the point. Like, if you want to look for something, all you got to do is go... It gives you an option. Like, for some reason, Sony doesn't... Have, but it does probably have an option, but it just seems to me Xbox... Is more f suitable, especially for first-person um, shooting games. I like playing first-person first, per first person shooting games on Xbox more than PlayStation. Why is it like the controller? It, or it just, or? it's just the, it's not just the controller. It's the gameplay alone. You may think about it. Halo is a first-person shooting game, and I think it's originated for for that I'm, type of game. Okay, but how? What about when people say like, yeah, they have they have first person shooting games, but PlayStation or Sony has sh uh, put sh uh, shooting games like Destiny originated just on Sony. Um, then there's um, before there was a there was the Halo counter, um, which was something else. Like but that's like funny that Division. You uh, there was and there there's there's some games. There's some games, but think about who made who, who made um, Destiny. Bungie. And who's Bungie from? Originally on Microsoft. Right. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's what I'm saying. So, Xbox to me, this is just me personally. I like first person shoot, first person first person shooting games. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I think it's specifically made for first person shooting games. And it's it's much smoother. The, the the graphics is much crispier to me. I give PlayStation this credit though. They are known for their adventure games, like um, like any adventure game, like Grand Theft or what else? Um, Final Fantasy role playing games, RPGs. Um, they are good for that. Cause I I like Final Fantasy. Don't get me wrong. I always like, especially the remake of Seven. I love that. Well, most people probably don't know that Six has a Switch, a Xbox, a PC. Oh yeah, I got. It, I got all. I got all four. Yeah, yeah. So, right. <laughs> what what makes you play Xbox one, one console over the no, 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 one platform over the other? Because I like first person shooting games. So, uh, to me, like. I play Xbox the most. Okay, so um, you say like first person shooter games, but how come um, would you do you like the the get over like the one match 
type of gameplay more, or would you prefer more of like a MMO type of shooter? And if you would prefer an MMO shooter, how come Destiny hasn't caught on for you? Or what, what do you feel like Destiny is missing for you to get you excited? Or, or what game has got you excited? I'm, I'm going to be honest. So with Destiny, the, the gameplay and everything is awesome. Um, the concept, the futuristic thing really threw me off a little bit. The jet plant, the flying, all that. I don't really care too much about that. I'm more of a realistic type person, so I like like the elements on it is is dope. The graphics is dope. The whole gameplay is dope. It's just the flying and the futuristic thing is it's just confusing me sometimes. You know, I like more realistic type gaming, like Call of Duty, like Call of Duty Warzone. The whole gameplay, Modern Warfare, the remake of Modern Warfare, like, they really did a good job because they made it real realistic, man. But the only thing they ain't do is just the elements. Now, if they had the elements on there, oh, my God, man. That, that would change the whole game. But they are bringing Night Mode to Warzone. A lot of people don't know that on the next season. So, so what do you say to somebody that's kind of like uh, Bottlewick, you know, we know him as Jero. uh uh-huh. Somebody like that that says, man, Call of Duty every time is just the same reskin Call of Duty. What do you say somebody like that and what's going to get them to play Call of Duty? Especially like we know now, Call of Duty Black Ops is coming out. Yeah, Cold War, yeah. So what do you say to a player like that? Like say, hey, why should they check out Call of Duty or Warzone or even Black Ops? I mean... The realistic aspect of it. Like, the Cold War is based on true events that really occur. That but, I played that. I played realistic stuff two years ago on Call of Duty. That's what he said. Uh, <laughs> uh, Warzone uh, or uh, Modern Warfare 2, 2X. Yeah, yeah, I got 2X. I never heard of 2X. But, <laughs> but a lot of people that like, Modern, like Call of Duty, you got some people that like playing zombies. Which is on the Black Ops saga and stuff, which is gonna be on the Cold War. Which is, I like zombies, don't get me wrong, fun. Zombies is fun. I think that's the only unrealistic type of game mode I will continue to play to this day. But I like more realistic stuff, just in case if something really, and, and, and this is another prime example. You know, most militants, man, they play Call of Duty. And stuff, and it helps them with their their vision, and it helps them with the precision, it helps them with the aim, and it, your eye coordination, and everything. That the military uses games like this. Like I think it was an article out. They were saying like one of the soldiers was playing so much Call of Duty, and he was an um, a- actual soldier, and he went over there when he went to war. He actually used the same tactics from Call of Duty. And he said he killed a lot. His his precision, his aim, and everything made him that much better because he played Call of Duty. And that's the stuff I like. Okay, so but what do you say to somebody that would say like, have you tried Battlefield? Because a lot of people say that Battlefield is that's another good game. Way more realistic. Like they that, they, that's, that, they, yeah. they specialize on how realistic Battlefield is. No, Battlefield. So Battlefield is also another game that I like. Is a real is it's not fast. See, Call of Duty is a little fast paced. Battle Battlefield is more strategic. So I can say Battlefield is more realistic than Call of Duty. I give I give them that. But the only thing that I don't like about Battlefield to me is is like the movement. I got so I play Call of Duty so much. The movement is totally different on Battlefield than it is on Call of Duty. You know, and um, a lot of people when you play one game and so for so long for years and years and years that go by, you get your eyes and your your eyes get adjusted to that. So with Battlefield, it's like yeah, yeah, Battlefield is more realistic. So you gotta really understand like. Like the elements got something to play, to play up amongst it and everything, and like 
the shooting, the, 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 the reaction of guns on that game is more realistic on Battlefield than it is on Call of Duty. They consider Call of Duty, well, I mean, up to the Modern Warfare, like Black Ops and all that stuff, they made it arcade-ish, but the previous Battlefield games been, been more realistic than Call of Duty until this Warzone that came out. They made, they heard people, and they were saying, people were tired of the jetpack flying, climbing on the wall, and they was tired of that. So, Modern Warfare went back to its original roots, which was straight up tax, straight up strategy tactics, and teamwork will get you um, the win. Besides just different special equipment that, that is unrealistic. You get what I'm saying? But Battlefield always been consistent like that. That's why a lot of people like Battlefield more than they like Call of Duty. Will you be interested in seeing like a Battlefield Warzone? They're like getting first in a Battle Royale. That will catch How my attention. How would you place that? I play it. Versus it's something. Well, I think that they have a death like match no, they don't. type of environment. They don't. And um, that would catch my attention. I mean, if you get first in the For Battle sure. Royale, that means you're the last man standing. It's basically more of King of the Hill type format where everybody is on the field and you're trying to be the last one alive. So it's like um, every man, basically every man for themselves and stuff. As far as getting away in multiplayer, you just got to play the objective of the game. With Battle Royale, you just got to be alive at the, at the end of the, the game in order for you to win. But have different tactics to use to help get you through the whole Battle Royale. Same way with Team Devonwall, like multiplayer. I'm going to just say multiplayer. Same exact way, but it's just that like I said, Team Deathmatch is an objective game and Battle Royale is more of a surviving game. That's that's the difference between the two to me. How do you feel like how has gaming helped you keep in touch with because originally you know a lot of people may not know that you're from Rockville. Mm -hmm. Um has gaming been able to help you kind of stay in touch with your friends and your family? Every day. Yep, it sure does. Consistently. When, especially when I stream online. If you see me online on Facebook gaming. They um, reach out to me, like my father and my brothers and my sisters, they reach out to me and stuff and just say what's up and show support and love and stuff. So, yeah, most definitely. Um, is there anything that you want to talk about? Or get off your chest? Oh, no. I mean, I'm pretty much good. Um, the, um, the event that's coming up in the end of this month, the anime bookend, um Uchi anime. Uchi anime Bukin, presented by UGA um, Gaming Bar. Come check us out. You will be terrific. You can't miss it. I know I sound a little low. Sorry about that. This is just my normal voice. I'm sorry about that. But yeah, come check us out. You can't. You you don't want to miss this. It's a lot going on in there. So. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Hold up, hold up. <laughs> so. Uh, you know, people that have been following the six, they've been uh, saying that uh, you said something about a podcast coming up. Oh yeah, so we got game. So the name of the name of the podcast is called Gamescape um, Podcast. Basically, this podcast is originated for gamers and anime lovers that deals with everyday mental health issues such as PTSD. Um, depression, anxiety, um, any, any, that, any, that, like, everyday life that we go through as games. We're very into these. Insecurities. Insecurities uh, and, like, no, wait, no, in, insecurities, um, you know, not, uh, not feeling like they belong in their own community. Yeah, that, that, that. Um, and, um, and we are also going like yeah. relationship tips and stuff. Yeah, and then we can have relationships. We can also have to tackle different perspectives from men and, and women. women. Um, this is going to be a unique podcast. We're going to have uh, three women, uh, three, uh, three. We, we 
awesome. many games. It's really two awesome many gamers. And uh, two um, guy gamers. Uh, and yeah. Okay, so with this particular podcast, we want to have three awesome women gamers um, that's going to really talk topics of what they go through every day as a gamer. As a woman gamer at that. So it's different between men gamers and women gamers. Um, also, we want to have men, three men gamers, two other men gamers besides myself. Um, and we just want to touch topics, man, as far as like um, what we experiencing every day to give the world to, to give the world what we experiencing every day as far as like why we don't feel like we're not accepted in, 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 in the world sometimes. Um, also, um, just to show what, what what we do day-to-day basis as, as gamers, you know, so. so. So, definitely be on the lookout for Gamescape in October. You don't want to miss this, especially to all, all the people that, that's not gamers, and you don't have an understanding of what we go through mentally, emotionally, and, and, um, and things of that nature. You want to check this um, podcast out. Again, it's called Gamescape Podcast. You don't want to miss this. Um, it's sponsored by Gamer Bar, UGA. We want such topics that we need to talk, talk about. So stay tuned in October. It's going to be exclusively on Gamer Bar's YouTube channel. So you don't want to miss that. Hit that subscribe to get a notification and let, let y'all know that we are on live. For those that want to reach out to me, you can catch me on Facebook and which is um, www.facebook.com forward slash six six is S Y X S I X Z two. Again, www.facebook.com forward slash six six two. So it's S Y X S I X Z two. Also, I'm on Twitch. It for um, Twitch TV, Twitch TV, forward slash six six s y x x i x z. That's it. Um, also, I'm on Twitter. You can catch me on Twitter with um at y o u n g l a i e. Catch me on Twitter also. Um, I post a lot on all those platforms. Uh, I also have a YouTube channel, um, S-Y-X-S-I-X-Z, so if you want to check out my, my clips on, it's mainly for Black Ops 4, but I got clips up there, go check my gameplay out, you won't be disappointed. This is 6, and this is Players Chat with the Wolf.